Hi guys, I'm Amy and I'm back with my full review of the Amazon Kindle Touch in 3G. I did an unboxing video and first impressions video last week which can be found here. And I'm just going to get right to the review. So here is the Amazon Kindle Touch in 3G. We can see that the design form factor is much smaller than the Kindle keyboard which stack together looks like this. It's a little bit smaller. So the Kindle Touch works because it has an infrared touch screen. That means the edges, the bezels of the device is much more raised here than it would be on the Kindle keyboard, which I'm okay with. I'm starting to get used to the form factor. And it's very nice weight and heft in the hand. It's a much nicer build than the Kindle keyboard, which mine was often plagued with the squeaky bezel problem. No squeaks here. On the bottom we have the USB port, a headphone jack, and the hold and on off button. And the actual face of the product itself is clean with the Kindle logo on top and the home page button right here. The home screen of the Kindle looks like this. I have mine organized by collections. It has all my collections, adult contemp adult fantasy sci-fi children and then over to my young adult books on the second page as you can see you swipe in the main menu as well as books i recently downloaded that i haven't sorted yet into collections the home screen has a menu which has options such as shopping in kindle store turning off wireless etc etc so the kindle store on the kindle touch is fairly straightforward I still prefer to use the Amazon web browser on my computer and just send stuff over, but you can easily browse books and newspapers by genre, like so, all using your touch screen, which is very helpful. And books with prime lending are marked with this little prime button right here. The actual function in the book is quite interesting. Let's go ahead to my copy of War Horse. The Reading mechanism for touchscreen is different than in the home screen where you swipe to move forward and backward. You can still swipe in reading mode, but the easier thing to do, in my opinion, is to press to tap to move forward and then tap the very left thin strip here to go backwards. And it's fairly responsive as you can see. Mine did lag a little bit while it was indexing all the books that I have. But once it was done indexing, it's just as responsive as the buttons are on the Kindle keyboard. So while in the book screen, you can also pinch to zoom. That will automatically change your size. Or pinch again. The same as you would on any other, you know, an eye device or any other touchscreen device really. And when you go to the top screen, we get the menu, which is very intuitive and easy. I love that the search bar is right up here and that's super easy to find to find things in your book by keyword. And this is one of the few books I have that has an x-ray feature, so let's go take a look. So x-raying the whole book, here are the main characters, the list of main characters and where they show up in the book. Important phrases that show up. So that's x-ray. The lending feature for Prime is quite nice, but you can only borrow one book per month anyway, so I don't really use that. And local library lending is very convenient, but there's often a long wait list if your library doesn't have a lot of licenses for what you want to borrow, especially because Penguin has now removed all their books from the Kindle Overdrive program. Okay. So you can no longer borrow books that are published by Penguin in your local library, which is a bummer, but hopefully they'll work that out with Penguin. You know, Penguin's always been a jerk about these things, so no one's really surprised. So the lending feature is okay, local waitlists suck, so the lending program isn't amazing, but it's the same program that other devices use, such as the Nook and the Sony, so there's really not much you can do about that. So on-screen keyboard is also motivated by touch, and it's very easy to use. Like that. Very easy, very accurate, no problems here. It's so much easier than with the Kindle keyboard. It's just, it's fantastic. Other features of the touch that I'm really loving is the easy ability to highlight, which is awesome. You just hold and then you drag like so to where you want it to end. And there it is, it comes up with the options to highlight, add notes, or share. 
The social features are fairly basic. You can share to Twitter and Facebook and I don't really know anyone who actually uses that. The one thing about the touchscreen that is downer is that I get a lot of accidental key, you know, page changes. Sometimes I would, you know, put my Kindle down like so and read while tapping forward with my left hand and eating with my right hand and then I would reach across I'm not wearing long sleeves today but I would reach across to grab a sauce or something and my sleeve would brush against the screen and it would do a page term which is annoying but you know it's the, one of the caveats of having a touch screen since it is an infrared device so that means you can touch the screen with anything um, that means gloved hands, a stylus, whatever you want so whatever you touch the screen with it will count as a touch unlike some pressure sensitive devices um, such as the eye devices where if you put on a glove it doesn't work. So that's a nice plus if you live in a cold area. One of my favorite features on the Kindle is actually worth talking about even in a new version. This was present in the Kindle keyboard also but let me just take a look here. So here is the popular highlights feature. This is in the Gospel According to Coco Chanel. 19 highlighters have highlighted this part. This is part of social reading I really enjoy. I really do enjoy watching what other people have highlighted. So that's a feature I really enjoy. Amazon is the only company that is offering a 3G option at all. And, you know, Barnes & Noble is advertising no ads, blah blah blah. But in reality, the devices are very competitively priced across the spectrum. At this point, price per spec is no longer an issue because everybody is priced pretty much at the same place. The only thing with the Kindle is that they do offer special offers, which is when Amazon basically gives you ads on your full screen, on your home screen on the bottom in a banner, or um, also in your screensaver, you get a full page ad which isn't that great, and I love the new screensavers on the Kindle Touch, so I paid for the full 3G Kindle without the special ads, which I'm very happy with, and 3G is incredible for travel. You can download and buy books anywhere you go, which is fantastic. So in conclusion, as always, I do feel like Amazon has put out a really wonderful, wonderful device. Swiping is easy, tapping is easy. It's very comfortable to read, you know, one-handedly which was one of the big things I was worried about. I was worried that the touch screen would make it awkward, but it doesn't really, it just looks like that. Pretty easy, I think. So that's it for my in-depth hands-on with this device. I really do love it. Um, I've been really enjoying using it. I love the new screensavers. I love how convenient touch makes everything. It was a worthwhile upgrade for me from the Kindle keyboard because I do read a lot, about 100 books a year, so I do get a ton of use out, out of my Kindle. If you don't read as much and you have a Kindle keyboard or the original Nook or Kindle 2, maybe not such a good upgrade, but if you do like it, I think from the Kindle 2 it's a great upgrade. From the Kindle 3, maybe you might want to wait for the second generation of the Kindle Touch since these are quite expensive with 3G option and you know, it's always nice to have them work out the bugs and the issues before the next version, which, you know, um, this is a very slick device already. As we have seen with the Kindle One, Amazon does improve their devices dramatically between generations. So if you have a Kindle 3 or a Kindle keyboard, I would say maybe wait until the second generation of the Kindle Touch. And if you have a Kindle 2 or a Kindle 1, hurry up and upgrade! This thing is great! So I've made another video, the unboxing video, where I talk specifically about pricing and where you can get these, as well as the ca caveats of the special offers program for cheaper Kindles. And that I will link to again in the info box below. I think this is a great device, and aside from a small couple of issues, I think I'll get used to them quite nicely. I think it's just because I'm not used to the device yet, but I quite like it. I'm definitely keeping it, which is saying something, because when I got it, I wasn't sure I was going to keep it because I have the Kindle 3. It's, you know, a one-generational gap. It's not a huge gap, but this is revolutionary in the Kindle family, I think. So I'm keeping it for sure and I'm quite enjoying it and I haven't touched my Kindle keyboard since I got this. So I think that should say something. So I hope this video was helpful for you in terms of helping you figure out which device you want. And if you've purchased a Kindle or you're thinking of purchasing a Kindle, please do let me know in the comments um, your thoughts. I really, really, really enjoyed 
um, conversing with you guys on via Twitter and the comments below on the last video I made about the Kindle and I'm just so excited that so many of you had shown such enthusiasm about both my video and the device and I'm so grateful for that. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more product reviews from me in the future as well as book reviews, please do subscribe and hit like and share with your friends whatever you want and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon.